Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to see you here again. Um, today's topic is going to be uh, something that I typically like to do and, and use when I'm doing close-up macro work, uh, particularly in the realm of stacking. So I just want to walk you through the process that I use. Uh, it's not necessarily the only way, the best way or whatever, but it's what I uh, typically like to do. And hopefully uh, by my showing you the way I do it, um, you can adapt, glean from it and uh, possibly do better uh, in, in your own work. So the first thing we're going to basically be doing in today's uh, program is I'm going to use this, which is a, a, a macro rail. And fundamentally, it's a two axis macro rail, so the rail can move forward and back, and then it can move sideways if need be. And it's great for not only doing macros, but you can also do macro stitching, macro panoramas, uh, macro stacking, the whole lot. Uh, this particular unit, uh, which is made by a company called ProMaster, it's fairly cheap. It's, uh, I think, under $100 um, and works reasonably well. Uh, my preferred unit is one made by Novaflex. It's called the Castel Q, or actually the Castel Cross Q, which gives you the same uh, two axis uh, capabilities. So the, the important thing to note here is if I can show this to you uh, and the camera will focus on it, hopefully. Yes, uh, this thing has centimeter graduations on both axes. And then the centimeter graduations are further subdivided into millimeters. And that's what we'll be using to determine how much this unit needs to move in the process of doing any kind of macro stacking work. So I'm going to mount this on the, on the, the platypod and onto the ball head. This is all mounted and, and ready to go. I'm going to put a camera on top of that. Uh, let me just switch over to an overhead view of what it is. So basically, I have a platypod with a unique ball ball head. On top of that is the um, macro focusing rail, and the camera is sitting on top of the focusing rail. Uh, and then what I have here is a 45 millimeter uh, macro lens, which we will be using to do the, the stack with. On this side here, I have a watch that I'm going to be photographing on a light table, and it has four overhead LEDs. So I'm just going to turn these LEDs on. And we can even turn the table on to make it uh, completely um, high key. The objective here now is to understand what it is that we're really working with and what it is that we need to do. How much do you need to move the camera and what is the calculation to do that? Because just randomly setting the camera and moving it forward from the front point to the back point um, won't really give you a good image stack. Now that we have the setup uh, ready for doing the photography, it is important to understand what we really need to do when we're taking any kind of uh, a focus stack. So now that so we have the setup complete, uh, let me just take you through a few slides to get you to understand the process that I use in order to create a good stack. The, the important thing that, you know, we've all got to remember is that the stack distance between images should be based upon the depth of field. So the depth of field is, of course, in any kind of macro work or close-up work, going to be extremely small. But not only do you need to cover the depth of field, but just like you do when you do panoramas, you need to have a little bit of an overlap. And typically for macro work, a 25% overlap usually will suffice. So let's just go to the next slide and let me show you what I'm talking about. So there's two things. One is a process where we can use a calculation to determine what's known as the focus step. What is the distance going to be based upon the lens that you're using and its magnification factor? 
The formula is quite simple. I'll put this down in my show notes also. So basically, where we're looking at C being the circle of confusion, and the circle of confusion is based upon the size of the sensor. So typically on a full frame sensor, we look at a circle of confusion factor, and you can read this up in Wikipedia or, or any other thing what circle of confusion really means. We don't want to go into too much detail in, in this uh, uh, short uh, video. 0 0.029 is the circle of confusion for a full frame camera whereas 0 0.015 is the circle of confusion for a micro four thirds camera. What I'm using today is a micro four thirds camera, but just for example purposes, we can use any camera to demonstrate what it is that we need to do. If we use this formula and come up with the step factor or the amount the camera needs to move, as long as the camera is focused on the subject at its closest focusing distance. Now, what is closest focusing distance? It's the distance that the lens can focus as it, at its closest focusing point, the distance of from where the subject is to the plane of the sensor. Be careful that you don't look at closest focusing distance being from the front of the lens. Uh, you know, you read on the internet as to, you know, what is closest focusing distance and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to see where everybody is coming from. And once you have determined that focusing uh, step factor, then do a 25% uh, safety factor to it. So basically, if you just take 75% of that distance and use that to move the rail uh, forward as you're doing a stack. Now, let's just take that into reality with the thing. When a full frame camera, using a 24 to 105 lens, which is basically a half macro lens, which is gonna give you a half magnification. So the magnification factor will be 0.5. At its closest focusing distance, you take the step factor to be two multiplied by the circle of confusion multiplied by the aperture, which in this case, I've got 5.6 factored by two, and then that divided by 0.5. That'll give you a step factor of about 1.3 millimeters. So 1.3 millimeters is very easy because you've got a centimeter scale. All you do is one millimeter at a time based upon the fact that we have a 25% safety factor. So using a 25% safety factor, you are at 0.97, which is approximately one millimeter. Fairly easy to move your focusing rail one millimeter at a time, all right? So that's basically what we're doing. Now, if that process is a little complex, where you need to use a formula to, to do this, there are other ways of doing it you can use what's known as a depth of field calculator. Now, unfortunately, a lot of depth of field calculators don't really do good depth of field numbers based upon uh, macro work or close-up work. But there is one product that uh, I've been using, which I kind of enjoy. It's got a little bit of an issue, uh, but apart from that, it, it works really well. And it's uh, been created by a, a photographer just like us. Uh, he's based out of Japan, his name is Martin Bailey, and the app that you can get from the Apple App Store is called the Photog's Friend, and I think it's about $4 if I'm not mistaken, but let me just switch over and show you what that app does. What you can see on the screen is my iPhone, which I'm uh, just running through HDMI. And I'm going to go to my photography selection and select this app, which is the photographer's friend. Now, here you can see that there's a bunch of numbers and the ones that really you've got to concentrate on is what is the focus distance? Next, what is the format of your camera? So in this case, I'm using a micro four thirds camera, so the format on the leftmost column is four slash three. The f-stop is 2.8, which is the f-stop that I have on the camera. And then the focal length of the lens is 45 millimeters, which is the focal length. Now, do not, in using this app, do not do 
any kind of a conversion. The conversion factor is accommodated in the application itself. So you don't have to take for, uh, you know, 45 millimeters and say, well, the equivalent on 35 millimeter camera would be 90 millimeters. That's not what we want. All right, now the next thing is, what is the focus distance from where the subject is to the plane of focus? And this is something that you, know, you may in fact want to carry with you. I typically carry uh, with me a, uh, a measuring tape. And then we can just use this measuring tape to measure the distance. So in this case, let me just switch back to that camera here. And I'm going to measure from the face of that, the, the, the bottom part of the strap or the beginning of the front point of the camera to the mark on the camera, which shows me where the sensor plane is. And that is 32, exactly 32 centimeters. All right, let's get back to the, uh, the um, calculation. So at 32 centimeters, we have a depth of field of 0.486. Now, this thing is saying millimeters. It isn't 0.486 millimeters. It's actually 0.486 centimeters, a little more than half a centimeter, all right, at f2.8. Now, in order for us to get a good stack, we again need to do about a 25% factor for this. In this particular case, just let's use 0.4 or 4 millimeters. The question really comes up as to how many images do I need to take or how far will I need to move this particular focusing rail. So now that we know what our step distance is going to be, we need to find out how many images are going to be required to create the stack. The way to do that is to actually measure the object that you're photographing. So to do that, all we're going to do is take our measuring tape and look at the size of the object that we are going to be photographing. And it is just about five centimeters. So five centimeters is going to be a total of 50 millimeters we're going to do a step of four millimeters. So 50 divided by four is about 13 images. Once we've determined that we're going to need 13 images, it's going to be fairly simple then to capture the 13 images. Once you have the 13 images, bring them into Photoshop, you can combine them there. My preferred way is to combine them in Helicon Focus. And what I'll do is I'll take these images. I'm not going to bore you through capturing 13 images. Uh, well, I'll take these images, then bring it into the computer and show you how I stack them. The key here is, please remember that it is imperative that you use a remote trigger when you're doing this, or you can use a two second timer. But preferably, even with a two second timer, you're going to constantly be, you know, hitting the camera and it doesn't necessarily stabilize immediately. It does take a little time. So uh, the quickest way to do it is to rack the, the uh, focusing rail uh, and then trigger it, rack the focusing rail, trigger it till you get all your images. You may want to take a few extra images just to make sure that you've captured the entire subject. Um, one other factor that I would like to bring up is that when you are setting this up to do your image, make sure that you do not have the image getting out of your frame as your focus point moves from front to the back of the subject. Let me just show you what I mean so that you don't make this mistake. I'm going to switch to the the camera itself. As you can see, we have the front edge of the watch pretty much in focus. And I'm going to actually pull the camera back just a wee little bit. Okay. Now, as the focus rail moves forward, I'd like you to notice what's happening to the image on the screen.
you see now that we have focus on the very edge of the top of the frame, the back of the uh, watch and where the strap connects to it. Uh, as you can see, focus peaking is indicating that that's where we've, we've focused. But really what happened, the image did in fact enlarge. And this enlarging could cause you more issues because you may end up with your primary subject being completely out of the frame when you have reached the end point of where you want to focus. So be careful of that and make sure that you, that you don't end up in a situation where you're going to have to repeat the process just because you didn't leave enough room for the expansion as the focus point changes. All right, so with that, what I'd like to do is I'll capture these images uh, by, by stepping forward. And once that is done, I will bring these into um, Helicon Focus and do an image stack for you. But also while we're there, um, I will post on the uh, show notes a coupon code that you can use for Helicon Focus and get a discount. I believe it's a 20% discount. I don't get anything uh, in return. There is no kickback. Uh, it's just a discount for you and uh, hopefully you can avail of that. So I have taken the images. What I did was I actually took uh, one extra image on either side. So I took uh, not 13 images as was calculated. I have 15 images. Uh, I brought those RAW files into uh, Lightroom and what I'm going to do is export those files out as JPEGs into a folder. And the reason for that is just to speed up the demonstration using Helicon Focus. Uh, no other reason, it's uh, just uh, a, a time uh, issue. So I'm going to select all my images and hit File export, put them into a folder that I have already created called Helicon Demo. And this will take about a minute or so. All right, so the 15 files have been exported. Um, just very quickly, let me just show you. This was the first image. Uh, the focus is uh, at the bottom over here. And then if we go to the last image, you can see the focus is up top over here. I didn't bother with the strap. Uh, there's no need for, for that. We just needed the watch face for demonstration purposes. All these images now have been exported into, uh, into a folder on my desktop. We're going to open Helicon Focus and bring the images in. Here are the, uh, is the folder with my Helicon Focus prepared JPEG images. I'm just going to select the lot and drag them over. And we can close out that directory. So here you can see that I have these files, uh, all 15 of them uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the structure on the right hand side. And the main screen is in the center. And all we really got to do is to use one of the three methods. The default or the preferred method usually is method B. Um, if the image is fairly complex and has a lot of overlapping components like petals with a flower, etc., then you actually, it's preferable to use the pyramid method, which is method C. But for purposes of this exercise, we're just going to use method B and we're going to basically say, here are all the images, let's just render them. So it'll go through and create a stack, put them all together, align everything, and make sure that the focus points are all nice and sharp. As you can see, the front to the back now is perfectly sharp, with the exception of the, the, uh, the wristband, which I didn't do any uh, focus stack for. But this element over here you can see is uh, basically still uh, a part of the image and it is in focus. So thank you for watching. Uh, really enjoyed uh, creating this video for you. And uh, if you like it, please do give me a thumbs up. Uh, do subscribe and hit the notification icon. I'm going to be on the road for the next, uh, let's say, two weeks nearly. Uh, going to Imaging USA in Nashville and then on to 
uh, Titusville for the Space Coast Birding Festival. I do plan on creating two episodes while on the road. One uh, specifically for the new Lumix L-mount uh, 16 to 35 lens, which is absolutely gorgeous. I've had it for a while now, and I want to do a hands-on demonstration review of that particular lens. And then the next piece that I'd like to also see if I can accomplish is to do an episode on some of my wildlife photography while I'm at the Space Coast Festival. So with that, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.